Good day and welcome back to the Higher Grounds podcast. Thank you again for joining us uh, on this morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever it is. We thank you for coming by every week and uh, being with us. I'm sitting in the host chair today. We have Rand Brother Andy off. I don't Woo. see him. And so it's freedom. Uh, we got the day off. No one has been thrashed, criticized. And, uh, like the so 4th we, of July. Yeah, everything's <laughs> going to be very, very positive, a little bit more upbeat today. Yep. And uh, so we're going to try to – I don't know. that. I, I say that, and we call it – but Brother Michael has the tendency to be a little on the – he's got the gift of discouragement. Don't, don't, well, it's because we've been, give, we've been giving it – Given to us so much. Yeah. Like, yeah. We was at Gateway this week for a meeting, and I had two people I'd never seen before, didn't even know, come up to me and said, I think you look like a guy I made know. I'm like, well, I ain't never said I had a familiar face. And I'm like, yeah, how do you know me? He's like, you on that podcast, Brother Wells? I just said, yeah. He said, he sure does give you a hard time. Yeah. yeah. And so we're picking, it's rubbing people off on us. So I, started, yeah. I started giving people a hard time. But can I say this, that anybody, you know, you're talking about being negative and stuff like that. I mean, you know, anybody that's pastored through pandemic, I mean, how, it's kind of hard to be positive all the time. It is. Now, if you've been an assistant pastor through <laughs> pandemic, you know, that kind of this time. Is that different? Sure. Yeah, it's a little, it, it is a little, is a little different. So, I anyhow, you. Brother Matt, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm just sitting here thinking. Every, you, it's been a while. It, it's like we get him every other month. Who? Me? Yeah. <laughs> and then every time he comes, he sits in the captain's chair. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Change is it, coming, baby. Is, are we change trying to get him to keep coming. coming back? Or? Change is coming. Is, is that punishment for not coming? And every that. time he's in the host chair, the ratings go, out the roof. Out the roof, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, roof or roof? Guys. Roof. The roof. The roof. The roof. The roof. Lucrative roof. deals for, I mean, just advertisements. Everything comes pouring in. I oh, love yeah, it. We're, I love it. Hey, we're gonna start Too bad they, they, they run away when we say that. Every time an advertiser wants to sign on, yeah. they say, now, is Andy coming back? We're like, yeah, he kind of he kind of runs this deal. Ah, we're going we're gonna to pray about it. Kind of worry about what he'll say. Yeah. Yeah, and all right. that. But hey, we love him though. We <laughs> love the man. I mean, we just we wouldn't. You sure I was do. I to say <laughs> that I wouldn't change anything about him. But there's yeah. probably a few things. Right, but right, hey, right. It's all it's all yeah, it's yeah, it's just a really good balance. Yeah. So. Uh, church doing well. Everything going good at church. Yes, sir. Going good. That's great. All right. Preaching's good anyway. Yes, <laughs> I learned that from <laughs> Brother Andy. Brother Andy. <laughs> Brother Andy, Andy quote. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I had I, I called him the other day and uh, I got asked a question and I responded with some very cold remark. Mm. I called Brother Andy and I told him what I did and he got real quiet. I said, Brother He's Andy, you there? He said, yeah, no, <laughs> He's crying, yeah. His influence finally his, spread. His influence yeah. spread. So we're He's very grateful for that. Brother Michael, how you doing, buddy? I am doing phenomenal. These are my favorite episodes. Yeah, well, yeah, they are. Hey, man, we hope it continues to be that yeah. way. Everything going good at the lighthouse? <laughs> I think so, yeah. That's great. They got a good so. pastor up there. I don't know about that. How, did you enjoy having Brother Bailey there for a little season? How was that? I did. Yeah, I did. I mean, our church has always had a good relationship with Brother Bailey. And, uh, of course, we didn't we didn't see him a lot. I mean, he kept a very, very busy schedule. Um, but he would, he would make a point to be there for special meetings and things like that. He preached for us several times in our church family uh, with the opportunity they had where we able to get closer. We, we did get a chance to see Miss Rebecca and the kids more because sometimes they would stay back for different things going on with the family and uh, what have you there. Something the ghost of Andy up. Wells through a coffee pot has spoken. Here, <laughs> yeah, but no, curious. we did. Yeah. We really did and we're, we're excited about what God's got in store for them down yeah. at Roanoke and uh, bright days ahead hopefully. Amen. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, today we're going to be uh, getting in with these guys. Uh, these are two very, very studious men. Um, and we're going to be talking about sermon, uh, sermon development. I like that <laughs> word, studious. Feels like me. Uh, and uh, but we're going to be talking about study, study helps, uh, and particularly these, the both of these guys use a lot of computer programs, bring those things in. Um, they both preach off of an iPad, which I have a message coming out very soon on ten reasons why the Antichrist will use an iPad <laughs> to preach off of. Uh, but anyway, that's you know that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm not I'm not coordinating to preach off of one. But uh, before we even get into the using those things. Brother Matt, uh, talk to us a little bit about just sermon, how, do you, how you study, where you study, those kinds of things. What, what are just some things that you do, that you always do? What's a part of your habits in studying? I read the Bible. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, man, that's a very good. <laughs> you know what Brother Andy would say? Yeah, read yeah, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Just read yeah. the Bible. <laughs> Tell everybody what it says. Yeah, I'll praise oh, okay. we, uh, I, I ain't never learned to, the, the, I guess since I'm not a traveling evangelist, studied on the road, uh, I just, all, I got to study at the house and I yep. study at church. And I like, go, I like it quiet when I mm -hmm. go in and I do my studying. And so that's, that's kind of how I 
I study. I don't mm-hmm. know what you what kind of question. I was, yeah, no, that's good. I messed up. Brother Andy got me caught on my eye. Uh, got it's my, okay. You're doing ADD. great, Brother Matt. But Y'all got some medicine? Yeah, yeah. Brother Matt, and I and I say this, of course, he's, he's a, a dear friend of mine, but uh, Brother Matt, his study has always challenged me to, to study. And I, and I love listening to men preach that when you get through hearing them preach, it makes you want to study. It makes you want to dig deeper. And and those things, and Brother Matt's preaching is like that. And Brother uh, uh, Poindexter is as well. I'm trying to build you guys up, man. Y'all I been sure appreciate it. So much. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, I get, that, yeah, so mm. Brother Michael, talk about, about your studying. Study timing and, and where you like to set. And just, I mean, just all those kinds of things. What's your, what does your studying look like? I'm very fortunate. The church recently um, allowed me. We have, a multi, we have a multi-purpose building where we have a couple Sunday school rooms in. And then at the bottom of the hill, we had there was a building on the property when we bought it. We had remodeled it. We were using it for a Sunday school mm-hmm. uh, room for a long time. It's a pretty large room, pretty large building. And uh, the church uh, has allowed me to move into it as an office. Oh, wow. And oh, uh, so I have probably right now the best place I've had in years just because it's completely separate from all the other buildings. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just like kind of like my own little domain. And so I've been going there four days a week probably now. But but we're talking about really the computer program side of it and how computers has made you know ministry easier. What are some of the tools that are out there now? Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna be honest with you, for me it's the it's the ability to digitize your library. Yeah. Uh, you know, through Kindle and stuff like that, you can buy books for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. Say a book that might have been maybe twenty five, thirty in a hardback, you know, paper, mm-hmm. you may get it for ten. Mm-hmm. So now I can buy three books for what I was buying one book for. Commentary sets the whole nine yards. And I just love the ability now to be able to take my my library with me a lot of places that I go. And uh, that's where the digital... Now, don't get me wrong. I still love to hold a book in my hand. I still love to highlight in a book and read a hard book. Uh, But now, because of some of the tools we'll talk about a little bit later in the program, you can really do all the same things on an iPad. And now, because it's, you know, those things can be stored in the cloud and Mm -hmm. I can literally pull up on my phone what I have on the cloud on my iPad. And so, there's, you know, technology in that regard has been good to us. Yeah, absolutely. What is what's the response? Because we still hear this. I I, mm-hmm. I know I've heard this. I'm sure all of you men have. When somebody says, "Now to get a message ready, the only thing you need is just you and your Bible and a, and a notebook," you know, and I understand in a sense what they're saying. What? But is it not foolish not to use? Things that we've been given. I mean, what's your response? My, my idea on that is this. I think every generation gets to build off the generation before it. That's exactly right. And so, you know, from the invention of the printing press, when men started putting their their works into, into writing, mm-hmm. and then those writings begin to circulate, we got to start, you know, men back in those days started getting to read what other men's thoughts were on the Bible. And then the next generation come out, and they got to build on top of that. Mm-hmm. Look, there's no reason to have to go back on a, on a passage and start at square one yeah. when someone's already done all that work. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, if you just know what resources to tap into, mm-hmm. you can really start about midway through that process, get a lot of the background, a lot of the uh, the social and political yeah. happenings, you know, get all that stuff understood, mm-hmm. and uh, then you can take and build on it. So I, I think I think some of that stuff is great in cutting down some of the time it takes to research that material out. Mm-hmm. Um, but but that's the thing, man. I, I don't want to go back and re-study something that's already been well yeah. refined. Yes. I just want to find that material and... And then, and then take the time to dig through it and make sure I understand yes, it yeah. so that I can give it out to, to folks that, that well, I, I hear the you. same co- the comment. Well, you, you ask preachers, what are, what are some of the most your favorite books you've been reading or some of your favorite commentaries? And you hear some of those guys say, well, we don't we don't read commentaries. And in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, I just heard you preach. I can tell you you've been reading books <laughs> or studying those commentaries. And right. so I think we are. I think we're not. I think it would be wise to use the to use the stuff that's available for us now to mm-hmm. use. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I like studying. You can tell man when he gets in the pulpit if he's been studying yeah and i read a quote i can't remember uh who said it but the, the man said it if you're if you're bound in your study you're loose in the pulpit oh and wow. mm. we're just talking about studying spending time studying the scriptures yeah that's a great God. quote yeah that's a great quote i think one of the most intimidating calls for a preacher is rightly dividing the word mm-hmm. i mean there's just so much that comes with it. if you unpack what the responsibility of that is yeah. that's intimidating yeah. because when we get in the pulpit we're supposed to be able to properly Tell the church what God meant when He said that. Yeah, absolutely. and you ain't gonna do that in fifteen minutes. You know, with an ink pen and a coloring, you know, piece of a coloring pencil, or whatever. Well, You're gonna the, take some time. The verse says, "Begin study to show thyself mm-hmm. approved." Let it. Let your approving of, of a calling and a ministry and a life. Let it show as you're delivering the word of God to those other people. And, yeah, and that's that's a, great, a big part of it. Before we get into, and I'm gonna let you kind of name some of the programs and, and the way that you factors in your 
study. One of the things I want to talk about as you both pastor, you're preaching, you know, three times a week, teaching Sunday school. How do you keep all of that organized? Which I can, you know, again, I don't, I don't keep everything backed up. So, I mean, I'm like, you know, I've still got notebooks and I'm putting them up and stacking up mm-hmm. when I get ready to go somewhere. <laughs> I'm taking notebooks. And so, but how do you, how do you keep things? What's a good way to keep things organized? How do you do that? Well, I use word, Microsoft okay. word. Yeah. And so when I type my outlines out, I can, I can pick them up on my desktop at home or my desktop at church, my cell phone or my iPad. So uh, a lot of times I still type my outlines out and print them, put them in a three ring binder. Yeah. And I still take every outline with my iPad to the pulpit. I'm just, I'm also afraid that, you know, something's going to happen Christ. with Apple or something's going to freeze up. So I have my hard copy. And so I do that. And, you know, it's easier when going through something on Wednesday night or Sunday night, you keep a folder yeah. and attach yeah. a file there. Every time you save that document, you save it under that file. And if you're ever looking for it, you can go to it. And so I like Microsoft Word and it ain't but five ninety nine a month. You can open it up on all your devices. You pay for it every month. You got mm-hmm. the space. and Like your new computers that come out, you can you ain't got to save it to your PC, and so now you're not clouding up everything on your computer yeah. that you can run. So that's what I use. I like Microsoft Word. Okay, I got you. Brother, how, how do you keep up with all your, your messages? I, I use Word as well. I'll type my message in Word. But um, matter of fact, it's been probably three or four years back now. I was at your team meeting mm-hmm. when you were still pastoring at Lighthouse, and Brother Jeff Lindsay was there. Yeah, uh, from Tabernacle Monroe, mm-hmm. and he was telling me about a program called Good Notes. And what Good Notes is is just basically a program where you, know, if you got an iPad, you can then go in with your like Apple Pencil and stuff. And you and I, I like to mark my messages up. I highlight and color and make notes out beside of what I've already written. Oh, blah yeah. blah blah. And uh, he introduced me to that program. So what I type up on Word, I email in and I, I Im- import it into that program. Mm-hmm. And so I mean, I've been using uh, Good Notes now for probably a couple of years, and and I've got probably over two hundred messages mm-hmm. uh, that are backlogged in that, but I mean, I, I study by it, I do my devotions by it, I really honestly use that program probably six, eight hours a day now mm-hmm. um, for all kinds of different things, uh, even books I'm reading, if there's a PDF version of that book, I'll import it, yeah. as I read through it, I make notes that I'll go back later and use for sermon prep, whatever the case may be, I love it, I, yeah. I just, I hope it don't go away before I die or the rapture takes place, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's just, a, it's just a blessing to have all those things at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. Bringing it, whether you're studying, your day-to-day work, those are yep. a benefit. Yep. Um, one, one thing that we are talking about, in case there are some others that are looking to grow their library, what are what are some of the computer programs that you use on your uh, on your iPad or computers? On how, mm-hmm. how do you in, how do you put those into your study? I, well, basically, on mine, I have a basic Bible reading app that that I use. Uh, like, I, well, I mean, you know, in, they're available. They're pretty plenty. So you can take whatever you, you're looking for and find that in a Bible reading app. But then I'm an old eSword guy. Mm-hmm. I've been using eSword just from the time I started. And the other guys are uh, use I believe it's Logos or Logos. So how I can't remember exactly how to say that. Uh, and they love it. I think it's probably whatever you got started with. I probably need to, there are better Bible programs than eSword, but I've just gotten used to it. You know, we get in, we get into those veins of just being comfortable. And yeah. so basically on mine, I mean, I've got eSword, I've got a Bible reading app, and I've got my good notes. Mm-hmm. And and then I have Kindle, of course. Kindle's yeah. where it stores all the books that I've bought from Amazon and places and throws it over there. So really right now, I've probably got about, I don't know, 10 to 12 different commentaries uh, stored in Kindle mm-hmm. that I've bought from Amazon. And, and then a lot of other books and so anything I want to throw over to good notes for reading or a lot of times if I'm just if I'm if I, as I'm scanning commentaries I'm studying a text I'll take pictures of stuff that I that I want to you know go back and revisit chunk it over to my good note file for that message go and highlight mark and then what's it you know that's where you spend all my time at yeah. then it's just yeah. going back and compiling that information together. into a message that uh, that is uh, easy to understand yeah. you know what I mean good so good that's I'm kind of a simple guy in this it's, stuff. well I was, you said simple guy but really that sounds like a lot of things coming together but you get used to it you do it's a Processing. Do you ever feel like you get in a rut in studying? Like you just uh, go, and how do you how do you keep from doing that? Not as much now as I used to. Gotcha. You know, because once once I think, and this is something I probably really didn't get comfortable in until I probably hit my early forties. Um, once you get your process refined to where you know the steps you're going to take week in, week out. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just like rinse, wash, and repeat. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And uh, now I may add a new commentary or two. I may be reading a book that that helps me in a message prep for that week. But Mm -hmm. besides that, now it's just every week. It's rinse, wash, and repeat. And I go through the same thing. And, and, And... 
there's a strain to get there. There was for me anyway. Yeah. But once you get there, then you just keep your ears peeled for other guys who have found a great commentator. Mm-hmm. And here's what I learned. Uh, I was listening to a podcast a week or two ago, and a guy mentioned a book called, I think it was Preaching Tools, mm-hmm. a little old 7 or $8 book. And what the book's about is it takes every book of the Bible and lists for you some of the greatest commentaries on that particular book. Wow. Now, that's invaluable. Yes, sir. And uh, so I bought that. So when I'm preaching through a book, I'm going to go through it and uh, find out what the first, you know, top two or three, four mm-hmm. commentaries are. And if I don't have them already, well, then they're worth purchasing for my study and preaching through that book. Yep. Because you know as well as I do, you go to preach through a book of the Bible, you may spend months, sometimes if not years, preaching through that particular book of the Bible. Yeah. It's worth those investments yes, on the front end uh, to be able to you know help help get you through that, that yeah. series. You, one thing, and I think Brother Andy is, we're going to come to Brother Matt with some of the same questions and find out how he does it. But one thing Brother Andy has always said since I've been around that, that the more you read, and nobody, your flesh doesn't enjoy reading. You have to make yourself read. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people just really love it, and they would just rather read than do anything else than fish or anything. But the more you read, the more you're taking in, you're just filling that bank up with more things that you can give out. Mm-hmm. And so I encourage you to to help your preaching grow, your spiritual life. You're going to have to become a reader and to break out of that just that same old rut that we get in week after week after week. I don't want to just have to preach what I can come up with off top of my head. Yeah. That's, uh, I want to be spirit filled, but I want to gain and get some things. As yeah, well. That's one thing I really appreciated now looking back on my time in Bible college yeah. is the, the heavy workload of reading and writing papers, which mm-hmm. when you're going through it, you know, you, you're not all that keen on it. Yeah. But when you get out, you realize, I mean, if you think about it, how, okay, what's your average sermon uh, outline length wise? How many pages? Mine is, if, if I have, it's usually f- f- four pages, mm-hmm. but they are, um, uh, I would say they're about six by eight, and they're kind mm-hmm. of front and back yeah. as far as just my pages. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you probably then, if you were going to preach three times that week, you would write about a 12-page paper. Oh, yeah. If you, by the time you yeah. take a, yeah. a culmination of, you know, so that's what we do. We re- and, and the research part, They I went to Calvary Baptist and King, and man, when we were writing our papers, they were always 10 pages, and it was you had to cite five sources. Mm-hmm. They taught you or forced you to learn how to research, mm-hmm. and now... And I mean that—that's invaluable yes. because that's what you're doing every time you look at a text. You're researching and you're gathering information. And here's what I love about it: you read four or five commentators, you're gonna find they disagree. Mm-hmm. Whether it's who wrote the mm-hmm. psalm or the or the text, what's being said in it, and so then it comes down to okay, I got good minds here, and they're not seeing the same thing. So what is this text actually saying? Mm-hmm. And that's where the, that grueling process in the study, yeah. uh, you know, comes Absolutely out. Come yeah, absolutely. One of the guys that really helps get me thinking outside the box is a is a preacher pastor who who was um, has a um, a degree in journalism investigative journalism mm. so their way of, of bringing some things out in the scripture because what's going to happen is you're going to be coming along you're going to be preaching and you're going to get to it you're going to get to a verse and need some insight and you're going to open up this guy's commentary and then he ain't going to have nothing and then you're going to open up the next guy and like well everybody just all of a sudden omitted that verse and then <laughs> right. you're but you're going to have to do some digging mm. Mm-hmm. to find from that, and you keep using those resources. Uh, Brother Matt, what about you as far as in your process? What are some computer programs? I think the first person that ever turned me toward any kind of using computer programs and things was Brother Matt. What all, what all do you like to use? There's, how does it there's several that I like to use. I first got started when I first announced my call to preach, mm-hmm. Preacher Charles Hems. He's in heaven now. He called yeah. me over to his house, showed me how he done things, yeah. Yeah. and he introduced me to the Power Bible. Mm-hmm. And so I bought a computer and bought the Power Bible and put it on my computer. And I started using the Power Bible. And so he got me introduced to typing my outlines out and copying and pasting yeah, from the Power yeah. Bible, the Bible verses and things. And so he got me involved in the Power Bible. So now I use the Power Bible. And uh, it's been updated several times since since then. And uh, it's I think I paid 15 bucks for it, uh, the Power Bible. Mm-hmm. And then there's Sword Search, which I had to pay about 60 bucks for it. But it updates every so often. And so Power Bible, Sword Search, eSword's free. Mm-hmm. Uh, on your PC, if you put it on your tablet, you had to pay a couple dollars yeah. for it. But yeah. I use eSword as well, and I, I like to. I do use Lagos. Uh, I don't like it, but since I've put so mm-hmm. much money into Word Search, yeah. Word mm-hmm. Search was what uh, I started investing money in buying digital books, putting yeah. them on your computer and having them. And I got several hundred books, a couple mm-hmm. hundred, but probably a thousand books on Word Search or Lagos now. Yeah. And so I use them. I love PDF files. Mm-hmm. I love Word documents, and so uh, OneDrive is a good source to have. Uh, Dropbox is a good source to have. You got a big file that you want to share with somebody that takes up a lot of space, OneDrive or Dropbox. Dropbox offers a few gigabytes that you can put just a few folders on, but 
Uh, I like one. So there's some of the things that we use, yeah. and, and so that's what I like using. Yeah. We've got you two men on here. I'd, I'd like to hear this from everybody that's that comes on here, but what would you say is the biggest difference in your preaching now than when you first started preaching, first started pastoring? Mm-hmm. What is the biggest difference now, and maybe even something you could you could attribute that to? Brother Michael, can you can you lead us off with that? Well, I was one of these guys who went to Bible college or started after I'd already been pastoring about three years, and so I had no I had no clue. Mm-hmm. I was just shooting in the dark. I mean, you know, a lot of mercy, a lot of grace by the yeah. Lord. Um, you know. I would say this, my difference between my preaching now and my preaching then, back then I would open my mouth wide and the Lord would fill it, yeah. <laughs> you know, as what I would probably be what I thought was happening anyway. And uh, man, I was making a ton of mistakes, just flying off the hip kind of deal. Now I understand there is a lot of labor that goes into, and, and I'm a lot more, I guess you could say, man, I'm a lot more fearful about going to that pulpit. Mm-hmm. And not saying what God said. When you start wrapping your mind around the fact you're giving account of every word. Yes. Yeah. And those are his sheep. He's trusted you to feed them. And then he's going to hold you accountable for what you feed them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's that's intimidating. Yeah. And uh, so now I, I realize, man, and, and I've heard this quote before. I can't remember who said it. So I'm not going to attribute anybody. Mm-hmm. But a man said one time that a preacher's job is to be a slave to the text. Oh, mm. wow. And I thought, man, I, I, I want to be that guy. Mm. You know, I mean, I want to be one of those guys that, that that looks at it like, that's my job. My job is literally to grind out behind the scenes while, while folks are out working, making their living. I'm going to be grinding behind the scenes, finding out what that Bible says. And when we gather to worship mm-hmm. and, we, and we gather for preaching, they deserve to hear Bible preaching. I love the terminology you just used. Those you've been you've had all day and sometimes we we forget this. You've had all Wednesday to be in that study and mm-hmm. pray and prep and give them the word of God. Yes. They, they really do. That's the bride of Christ. Yes. They deserve they deserve our our best. Yep. They deserve our whether it's and that starts mm-hmm. back in the study yes. before I ever performed, got in public. Yes. It started back there because that's what they deserve. And one of the greatest things we can ever do for our young men is let them know that call to preach is not a a call or an opportunity or a platform to you be a lone ranger. Mm, no. You now have a higher level of responsibility to be a man of the book. Yeah. And when yeah. you open that word, those people deserve to hear what God says. Yes. You know, not read a verse, depart, mm-hmm. and go off here and give us your opinion 20 minutes. Oh, I mean, because honestly, boy. that's the way I preached in the early days. Oh, boy. And made a ton of, I mean, it just, you know, uh, but anyway, so, mm-hmm. you know, you learn yeah, uh, you, you fall all over yourself some, and you look back with regret. But hopefully, I can help save some guys from making some of the mistakes I Didn't made. You put in the up early a days. statement a while back before getting brother Matt something about, um, you know, if your message is filled full of, I think, or am I? Yeah, yeah you heading for trouble? Yeah, that's that's pretty true. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna keep backing yourself to a corner where you got to explain your way out. But if you're giving that book, that book, that's right. To explain. That's so. right, brother Matt. How has your how's your preaching evolved over? How long you been you been pastoring for? Seven? Six years. Six years. Mm-hmm. How long you been preaching? Uh, Sixteen years. Okay. How from from that point, even first pastor and start preaching. How has it evolved now? When what are some things that have helped change you and help you in that? In well, that we, we you talked about sermon length and pages a while ago, and so I remember when I first started preaching, you went from three pages, what's about a couple hundred words, until now uh, I average around seven pages, two thousand words. Mm-hmm. And the question got asked last night at the table was that after a revival meeting was, do you manuscript your sermons? And mm-hmm. I do manuscript my sermons as far as about about every word. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'm not bound to a sermon when yeah. I. But just say I go back and preach that same sermon again. I have a lot of detail to the outline that I can reread that 2,000, 2,000 or twenty two hundred word outline, and I I can call back to remembrance everything. And and so I can tell a difference in my preaching now. Uh, my first two years of pastor, and I preached like. I've always preached just get a top a text and go through mm-hmm. the text and preach. Uh, but my last three, the last three or four years now, I've been going through books of the Bible, and yep. I can tell a big Happy difference church. not only in my life, yep. Yep. but in the spiritual atmosphere of our congregation. Mm-hmm. Our congregation are is now stronger than they were when I first took it. You used the terminology while I go feed the sheep. 
And I, I guess I would say I had TV dinners the first year or so of my pastor. <laughs> now I got I go to the grocery store and I get the meat and I cook <laughs> it there. Uh, that. It's like when we was polo in the preacher yesterday, Debbie. you heard the chicken frying in the van. <laughs> That's kind of how I would describe, I would describe uh, it now. I uh, I versus fast food or fresh food. Yes, so sir. that's kind of the... That's great. Yeah, I hope that helps. It does. It, right on tap. A couple of things. Yeah, you be yourself. We all know that. Mm -hmm. You need the touch and the help of the Lord. But don't be afraid to use other resources, whether it's, you know, computer programs, it's commentaries, yeah. or it's other men. Very often we reach out and we ask other men, tell me what you think about this text mm -hmm. or about going there. I, we do that often. Mm -hmm. Man, I want to thank you for taking us into your private life as far as your studies today, and I have no doubt that will be a help me today, and it will be a help to some others on mm -hmm. down the road. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Higher Grounds Podcast, and until next time, and hopefully Brother Andy will be back, you keep pressing on the upward way. Mm -hmm.